بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته One of the greatest form of ibadah to Allah Almighty is sujood and it is clearly mentioned as a form of ibadah in the Holy Quran Allah Almighty said so perform sujood to Allah Almighty and perform worship and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who deserves to be worshipped in this way with sujood. He's the only one who deserves to be worshipped with any kind of worship. But most specifically is this one. Because it is one of the at most form of ibadah that is not done to anyone else. Standing for example, people do it naturally sometimes. Bowing, many people do it elsewhere as well. Sujood is rarely done as a form of ibadah except by most Muslims all over the world doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also indicated in the Holy Quran. So shouldn't they perform sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created everything around? Because He is the creator. He is the nourisher, the sustainer subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why He deserves to be worshipped. No one else deserves this. Any type of sujood that is performed by creatures to other creatures, we have two things. If it is by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's still a form of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in obedience. And it is done to other creatures in honor, honoring, not as a form of worship. For example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angel to prostrate and perform sujood to Adam alayhi salam. That is not ibadah to Adam. That is honor to Adam. The ibadah is to Allah. The order is from Allah Almighty. So when they were performing the sujood, it is still ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Clear. Now, what is the meaning of sujood? Sujood simply is to be humble, to feel humility, display humility, and surrender and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a form of ibadah. Humbleness and humility and submission as a form of ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believer puts his most honorable part of his body on the ground. And with it he is humble inside and out with his own body and with his heart and feelings in front of his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his creator. Now people are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship him. We are body and soul. So that spiritual feeling, everybody feels it, even disbelievers and atheists and everyone. And that is one, if someone is not performing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most likely he is performing it to other creatures. He feels the need to fulfill that spirituality. Now the correct way to do it is to do it to the creator, not to the creatures, not to other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned two types of sujood. One sujood that is by creation, natural. So everything on heaven and on earth submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most creatures do it willingly. Most creatures do it willingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the heavens and earth and everyone in them and everything in them and the angels and the mountains and the rivers and the trees the whole creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and animals when it comes to people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and many people perform sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because people have a choice Allah Almighty gave them a choice whether to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by choice or not they have this choice by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said then many people and many among them deserve punishment means those who do not perform sujood at all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all creatures but many people not all people but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the believers the righteous the messengers one of the main criteria mentioned to them was sujood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sahaba radiallahu anhum you see them performing ruku' and sujood. You see them performing ruku' and sujood, dedicated to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One clear example of them. Alhamdulillah, this is still practiced by Muslims all over the world. 
One of the main criteria of Muslims is that they gather for Salah. It is a very beautiful and repeated, repetitive uh, criteria or action done by Muslims daily, all over the world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also spoke about the angels that they do perform sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned as well the choice of a human being to perform it or not. So the righteous one do it and the disbelievers don't do it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if they do it, they might associate others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they might perform sujood to other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the, 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 the position of sujood in Islam is highly regarded. We say that it is the best or the most honorable type of ibadah of a person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that it is one of the reasons for success in this world and in the hereafter. When Allah Almighty ordered the believers to perform ruku' and sujood and do good deed so that they may succeed. One of the reasons, one of the reasons for success is to perform sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, success here is not only in the religious part, even on the worldly matters as we will come later on, or the spiritual well-being if you may. Second thing is, it is one of the most apparent criteria of believers. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about Ibadur Rahman, the servant of the most merciful, Allah Almighty, the servant of Allah Almighty, his description, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and those who perform sujood and ruku' to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they hear the verse of Allah Almighty. When they hear the verse of Allah Almighty, they perform sujood, crying to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also what the most repetitive part of Islam, the most repetitive pillar of salah is the sujood. So in every rak'ah you have two pillars of sujood. No other pillar is repeated similarly. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud he said the best part of salah is ruku' and sujood. Scholars dispute, many scholars hold this view, that the best part of salah is the ruku' and sujood. And out of them, the sujood is the most important part of salah. And there is probably an indication to that by naming the place of salah as masjid from sujood, the place of sujood. The place of sujood. So it's not the place of standing or the place of ruku' but the place of sujood, indicating that this is one of the most important acts uh, of salah. And it is one of the proofs for the belief of a person. A person claims to be a believer. If he does not pray, if he does not perform sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what type of belief is that? And that is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the belief, he says, verily, only those who, those who believe in our verses are only those who, when it is recited to them, when they hear the verses of their Lord, they perform sujood to their Lord. Those are the true believers. And that verse in the Holy Quran says, verily only those. And then it gives this criteria, indicating the importance of salah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam indicated it further in many other places. We have already covered that before. But we are mentioning the importance of sujood because here Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions sujood as a criteria for true believers. And furthermore about sujood, sujood is a beloved action to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Thawban radiallahu an came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what is the most beloved action to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of all ibadah? Tell me a type of ibadah that will raise my grade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remove my sins. Beautiful request from Thawbah radiallahu So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, increase sujood. Means pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. Sujood is repeated in the salah often. So increase sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam further explained, because you will never perform a single sajda for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except that Allah Almighty will raise you one full grade with Him and will remove one sins of yours with every single sajda. That is the mercy and generosity of Allah Almighty. 
Furthermore, sujood is a place when the dua is answered, when your supplications are answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about sujood, as for sujood, then do your best, striving to increase dua in it, because it is most likely and deserving to be answered. In sujood, do your best in dua. All your hopes, all your dreams, all your supplications, the answer to all of that is just one sujood away. We are very good at complaining to other people, at asking other people sometimes, at demanding and searching and going and working. And we neglect the most important one and the most important way. Supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do sujood and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, an, uh, uh, this is the advice of the Messenger sallallahu himself. You need something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need your dua to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do it in sujood. You see many people nowadays in sujood, mashallah, the sujood is so fast, you could barely say subhanallah in it. The minimum requirement in sujood is to be able to say in it subhanallah, that is the minimum. If it is less than that, this is not sujood, not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the minimum duration, at least. I see some people, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the salah of the hypocrites. So their ruku' and their sujood, like the picking of cocks, chickens, when they are eating. It's just barely touching. Maybe the ground is too hot for them, I don't know. Something is wrong. You are performing a form of ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are getting close. This is the closest you will ever get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to all your dua and supplications. You don't need anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fine, you don't need anything in this world. What about in the hereafter? You don't need anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Doesn't make sense. So, you need to concentrate on that. That is why this, the sujood of the Messenger وسلم, was very long. Aisha radiallahu anha reported the sujood of the Messenger وسلم, when he prays alone for himself, not when he is an Imam. See, sometimes the Imams shift that, twist it. So when they pray as Imam, mashallah, it is a very beautiful and long salah. When they pray their own sunnah, it's very quick. That is wrong. In Islam, it should be the opposite. Your best salah should be when you are alone. Your longest salah. When you are an Imam, you should make it a light prayer. Because there are old people behind you, there are tired people, there are sick and patient people, there are people who have other duties to attend to, other appointments and work. So that you don't have the right to lengthen it now. And that is why you have to make a perfect salah but a short salah. You have to make the shortest perfect salah possible. But when you are praying alone, that is when you lengthen it as much as you want. So how long was the sujood of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Aisha radiallahu anha said, the sujood of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was as long as one of you will recite 50 verses from the Holy Quran. So we're talking about between 10 and 20 minutes. Single sujood of the Messenger sallallahu Double the time of our salah nowadays. That is the sujood. Okay, because you are now in contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sujood gets you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty mission did the Holy Quran. Fasjud waqtarib. So perform sujood and get closer. Closer to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perform sujood, get closer. Perform sujood, get closer. And even closer. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the closest a servant will be to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is at the time of sujood. It's closest. So you need to remain in contact and in relation and close uh, proximity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as long as possible. That is why the sunnah is to lengthen it. And also with sujood, sujood is a place when there are blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and favors and pleasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, the believers, you will see them performing ruku' and sujood, seeking bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His pleasure. Why do they perform the sujood? To seek bounty, blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasure 
his, his pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, sujood is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regards you. Allah Almighty regards your prayers, your salah. So you need to purify it. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that when a person faces the qibla, stands in salah and faces the qibla, Allah Almighty will put his face in front of his face. As long as he does not deviate away from the salah. As long as you are concentrating on the salah with your body and your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for you. The moment you turn away with your mind or with your body, Allah Almighty leaves you. So you need to be aware of that. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he mentioned, it is Allah Almighty who regards you when you are standing and when you are performing sujood. And turning away among those who perform the sujood, Allah Almighty regards that as well. It is also one of the means to be a companion of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. Who doesn't want to be the neighbor and companion of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter? One of the reasons to be close to him is to increase your sujood in this dunya. We have one of the Sahaba radiallahu an, Rabi'a bin Ka'b al-Aslami radiallahu an. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him to ask for any favor because of he, he, he did something for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So asked him, ask me for anything. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I ask to be your companion in the hereafter. Such a clever person among the Sahaba. All of them were clever. But that is a very quick and beautiful request. So he immediately said, without hesitating, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I ask you to be your companion in the hereafter. The Messenger وسلم, said to him, or something else, ask for something else. He said, it's only that. I do not have any other request. True determination. You have a goal, set it, aim for it, and go forward to it. That's it. So he said, there is nothing else. It's only that. The Messenger وسلم, said, then help me again to yourself with extra sujood, many sujoods. Increase your sujood so that Allah Almighty will accept my supplication to you and for you, my supplication for you, and will make you my neighbor in the hereafter, my companion in the hereafter. So increasing the sujood is one of the means to get you closer to the Messenger وسلم, in, the, in the hereafter. Now, uh, keep in your mind that many people nowadays are feeling constraint of their hearts, difficulties, or pressure, stress, anxieties. All of these are signs that the soul is missing something. You know, when your body misses something, if you are thirsty, it will, it will ache you, it will give you some indications. When you are hungry, you will have some indications as well. When you are tired, you will have some indications and so on. When there is pain, when there is any kind of problem with your body, it will give you some indications. Now the soul does the same. When the soul has problems, it will give you these indications. So the stress and the anxiety and the hard feelings and the low feelings and so on, all of that are signs that the soul has a problem. The soul is hungry. Many people when they face that, what do they do? They do more for the body. Let us go for a walk, let us go for a place, change a, a direction, go to some pleasures, eat, play and so on, watch movies, try to change the atmosphere. So what are you doing is that you are ignoring, you are covering what you are having only. That is not a solution. That is a problem with the soul. The best solution for the soul, the spiritual problem, Allah Almighty mentioned that in the Holy Quran. When he spoke to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and we know that it constrains your heart what they are saying, what they are saying about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and about the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the Holy Quran, the disbelievers. We know that it makes a very hard feeling in your heart. So what is the solution for that? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, so perform sujood. Simple. Simple. So the solution to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so glorify your Lord and be among those who perform sujood. The solution, perform sujood, say subhanahu rabbi ala in it. Any other tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will go. Try it yourself, you'll see. Because the idea is it will restore the balance between body and soul. When that is restored, you are calm. Like when you are feeling hungry. 
Feeling hungry does not mean go and play. Go and watch a movie. Feeling hungry means go and eat. Simple. But if somebody neglects that by playing and so on, it will go away for sure, for some times. It will return later on. But is it the right thing to do? That is not a solution. That is a covering up only. The true solution, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Glorify your Lord with his praise and be among those who perform sujood. Final point, sujood at tilawa There is a type of sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, called sujood at tilawa Ibn Umar anhu said that when the Messenger وسلم, recites the Holy Quran for us and when he passes by a verse of sujood, he will perform sujood and order us to perform sujood as well. That is the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, He will perform sujood, we will perform sujood. There are few places in the Holy Quran for sujood. It is sunnah when you pass by them to perform that sujood. When a Muslim reads such a verse and performs sujood, shaitan will turn away in a secluded place and start crying. And he says, woe unto me. The son of Adam was ordered to perform sujood and he obeyed and performed sujood. So paradise is for him. And I was ordered to perform sujood and I disobeyed. So hellfire is for me. Start crying. Sujood is a, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all the believers. So we should concentrate about this beautiful ibadah and uh, Pay attention to it and increase our dua and supplication and sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who perform sujood often and often and among those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify His praise day and night. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get us closer to Him and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our supplication and to give us from His bounty and pleasure. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in al firdaus Al-A'la with the rest of the prophets and messengers and the righteous and the saints and the martyrs and the rest of the believers. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.